Hi, my name is Scientist Rachel. I live in a little town called Mead, Colorado, and I work in Denver, Colorado. Some of my things that I love to do the most, some of my hobbies are reading, and I really like traveling anywhere that has water, like the ocean. This unit is gonna be uh, for grade four. It's called Waves, Energy, and Information. So I've hired three scientists from the town of Mead who are gonna help us with this unit. Scientist Buddy, he's the brown dog. Scientist Sunny, he's the yellow dog. And Scientist Jack. We are at chapter one, lesson one, and you're gonna need something to write with and something to write on today. It doesn't have to be something, um, it doesn't have to be a notebook, it can just be a piece of paper, whatever you have that works for you. We're starting a brand new unit on communication. We are gonna study animals in a national park and work to explain how they communicate or share information underwater. What kind of animal is to the left of your screen? And what do you know about that animal? If you said dolphin, you are correct. I know that dolphins live underwater, but I don't really know where they live. So this is Blue Bay. It's a place where many bottlenose dolphins live. Uh, a bay is a section of the lake um, formed by the lake or the ocean, and it's formed by the shoreline. This is a very beautiful place, and it needs to be protected. This is a bottlenose dolphin family. These dolphins are very social, and they like to be around other dolphins. They usually stay close to their family members. Blue Bay National Park has a superintendent who keeps track of the dolphins. She has observed the dolphins swimming in groups, and she often sees mother dolphins with their calves or their babies. She has noticed that the dolphins seem to be able to communicate or share information using body language to signal when food or danger is nearby. The park superintendent thinks the dolphins are somehow sending each other signals through the water that don't require them to see each other. But she doesn't understand how it could be possible for them to send signals underwater that travel so far. Even when the dolphins are far apart from each other, they somehow seem to find each other again. So, in this unit, you are going to be marine scientists. So that way you can figure out, help the superintendent figure out how dolphins are gonna communicate to each other. So Maya Martinez, who is a park superintendent, has written us a letter. It says, to marine scientists, that's you. Thank you for helping us found, find out about how the mother dolphins in Blue Bay National Park are communicating with their calves. Please investigate how signals could be could travel underwater and write me once you have the explanation. So even though Blue Bay National Park isn't a real park, mother dolphins and their cats do communicate with each other in the wild. And so that's what we're gonna try to figure out. So here's our big chapter question. How does a mother dolphin communicate with her calf across a distance? So over the next few lessons, we are going to work to answer this question. So how could they be communicating or sharing information? Scientist Jack thinks they talk to each other like you and I are talking right now. Scientist Sunny thinks they might be using sound. Scientist Buddy thinks they point or use their fins. So who do you think is correct? If you said Scientist Sunny, you would be correct. So we know that dolphins are using sound, but we're not really sure how they're doing that. One way marine scientists study dolphin communication is by listening to and recording sounds dolphins really make in the wild. We are gonna listen to some recordings of dolphin sounds to find out more. If you have your science investigation notebooks, it would be page three, but if you don't have it, it's not a big deal. 
just write down M on any piece of paper, any notebook you can find in your house, and listen to every recording and then tell me what you think. You're gonna write down what you think. I'm going to play Dolphin A, B, and C twice for you so that you can listen carefully. Here is Dolphin A. Here's Dolphin C. What did you notice about all of those dolphin calls? So I noticed that they're all very high. They had really high squeaks. Every single one of them was different. Not a one of them was the same. And one of them even had this weird little clicking sound to it. In this unit, we're going to investigate how sound can travel between a mother dolphin and her calf underwater. Before we go on, I want you to write down your first ideas that you have about sound. This is not a test. I don't want you um, to, to worry about it, to, uh, to figure out if you have the right answer or the wrong answer. That's not what this is about. I just want you to write down what you think sound is and how sound travels. So I'm going to read you a story about a girl named Maria. And there are three questions that you're gonna answer in this um, story. If you have your investigation notebooks, um, you can take it out and jot down notes or whatever notebook that you have, whatever piece of paper, and you're gonna answer my three questions. You can stop at every question and or stop the video and answer that question and then keep going. Here we go. Maria was working on homework quietly in her living room. Her brother was playing music on his computer on the other side of the room. Suddenly, something about the music changed and surprised Maria. Maria was so surprised by the change in the music that she jumped. So here was the music before Maria was surprised. And then all of a sudden, something changed. And here's where Maria was surprised and this is what, I'm gonna move this over. This is what the music sounded like that surprised Maria. Question number one. How did the sound get from the computer to Maria? So remember, she was sitting in her living room, she was studying quietly, here's the music, then something about the music changed and surprised her. And here's what happened to the music. Question number two, why did the music suddenly surprise Maria? Again, here's where the surprise happened. So why did the music suddenly surprise Maria? And the last question is question number three. How do computers help humans send information across distances. Thank you so much for um, helping me out with today's lesson. I will see you tomorrow, scientists.